Okay, hello everyone, and uh, we are live. Welcome to the 29-minute hangout. This is Chef Doug DiMercurio along with Chef Katrina Van Outhusden, and we have a very special guest tonight as well who we'll introduce you to in just a moment. As always, this is only going to last 29 minutes, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time doing long introductions or anything like that. I'm going to let Katrina handle our housekeeping and introduce our guest, and so let's kick this off. Awesome, everybody. Well, welcome to the 29-Minute Hangout. My name is Chef Katrina, and again, we're partnering up with Doug DiMercurio on this one. Excited about this evening. You guys do know, as we do every podcast here and every every hangout, you guys are more than welcome to ask questions, engage with our special guests, and pick her brain, because that's what you're going to definitely want to do tonight. 29 minutes is going to go fast, and we're going to get our special guest, which is Kate McShay, which if you haven't heard of her, is just a total wow. Uh, she has been rocking it with video and Facebook and I've learned so much from her and just watching what she's done. She's built an empire in less than a year's time. She's rocking a six figures. Um, her and her husband are just killing it and I know we're going to get them to spill some of the biggest secrets tonight with you guys because we're going to force it out of her. So I just super excited to have Kate McShay on here with us this evening. Uh, this is going to be awesome. You guys please ask questions from her. You guys are always doing a great job of it so let's continue. So Kate... Yeah. Would you kind of introduce yourself to us and kind of tell us how you got started in this internet marketing industry? Sure. Um, well, first of all, thanks Katrina and thanks Doug for having me on. I'm super excited to be here and be able to share my wealth of knowledge that I've learned and consumed in a very short amount of time with all of your listeners. Uh, so, a little bit about me and my story. Um, Andrew and I do work the business together, however, we have different backgrounds. So I was a previous second grade teacher. I was actually relocating when I started this business when I was going to be moving online. And I, I had that I had that moment of do I go and move to Oregon and start up teaching again and start from, you know, bottom floor, all that kind of stuff. Um, I want to have kids, you know, there are so many different thoughts running through my mind. Or do I want to start really building this this part-time home business that we were you know part-time building and really not doing anything with and so that's when we really started to run hard with um, internet marketing and we actually my first event ever was the No Excuses Summit I was not involved in our home business at all. This was something that Andrew was doing late at night after he got home from work and I was sitting downstairs having a glass of wine having no clue what he was doing. He was extremely smart and strategic and took me to No Excuses Summit and I just fell in love with the industry from there. I saw it as a huge potential for me to be able to teach people a skill set outside of my realm of second grade teaching. And so I struggled for about 12 months really struggled figuring out what I wanted to do. We fell in love with video marketing, started out with YouTube, and that's when we got to the point where when we really took it seriously, we started generating 20, then 50, then 100 leads per day, and then our income started to increase, and it just got to that point where once we started to see momentum, that's when we could really help other people, and it's just been an absolute blast ever since, and now we're speaking and training on the topic of video marketing and branching out into Facebook and blogging and doing a bunch of different stuff, um, and it's just been an absolute blast. So uh, I'm just curious, what was it when you were at that point where you it, you kind of made the shift and all, and I'm going to say all of a sudden, even though I know it wasn't all of a sudden. Right. Um, but you went to, you got to that 20 leads to 50 leads a day. What was it that made the big difference from where you were before to that point in time? Yeah, so there's two things that I remember. Is it was back in 2013, and the f there were a couple of different commitments that I made that year. Um, two things that I realized was I was really treating my business like a hobby, first of all. And I made a commitment in 2013 to go to as many live events as possible. Okay, I went to No Excuses in 2012, and then 2013 came around. And I still wasn't having any results in my business, and I realized that it was me. It was my fault, and I realized it. Made a commitment to go to as many live events as possible. I was eating granola bars out of my suitcase, um, <laughs> sharing rooms with people, and that was my first piece. And then the second piece was picking one strategy and actually seeing it through until I started to see results. And then I started to just do more of that strategy until I started to see more results. And an amazing thing happened was 
once I started to see results, there was a belief there that it was something that I could possibly do. I saw other people having success, but I also didn't know their struggles that came along the way. So committing to go to live events was huge because I could learn from so many people who are already doing it right and already having success. And then the second piece was actually focusing in on one strategy for about, it was about 120 days of hard, hard focus. And then that's when momentum just created and just kept going and going and going. Right. Yep. Yep. I get that. And I mean, I think that's, I see that it's a similar pattern with a lot of people um, that I work with. And most people won't go the whole 120 days. They want to see it in 30 days and then they quit. Yep. You know? exactly. So if you're serious about it, then like you said, commit to it being a business, not a hobby, and commit to doing it for 120 days. Right. You know, six months or whatever. Yeah, four, months, yeah. four to six months mm -hmm. and you will get results so, right and right? it's the expectation too right I had such an expectation of what I wanted to get but my actions weren't reflecting on on what I needed to do in order to get there and so once I stopped I actually physically stopped myself from even thinking about what was going to happen after and I just put tunnel vision on any you know I went to every single training I invested in every course possible in YouTube video marketing and just took massive action without even thinking about what was going to happen because I knew results were gonna come it was I just had to have the action first and keep that expectation out of it yeah. Yeah. so I have a question for you. For a lot of people, video is probably one of the scariest things for them to do. Somebody, you know, they hate their hair, they hate the way their voice sounds. And like, did you have any of that kind of struggle when you first got into video? And 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 to t yeah. So answer that question first. So that's a great question because I say I focused 120 days hard, but it took me six months to get to that 120 days. And what I mean by that is I. I had the hardest time, number one, it was mindset for me. It was, well, what if I don't know what to say on camera? What if I have to have my makeup perfect? It would take me, you know, an hour and a half to get ready. It took me two, two and a half hours to record my first video, and it was 11 minutes long. Um, so I would say that I did everything and anything to be the biggest head trip to actually get video started. But what I realized is once I did it, once it took me two and a half hours to record that first video, there was something that changed. It just felt okay. And it felt good. And I got used to the fact of it's not going to be perfect. And I just have to grow. I have to continue to develop. And there's somebody out there who needs me. I believe it was Ray Higdon who said, you're selfish if you're not taking action. And you're selfish if you're not ultra successful because somebody needs you out there. And the crazy thing was is that once I got out of my own head and once I stopped caring about where I was and what I looked like, I we got to 100 leads per day in a 100 square foot loft with fluorescent lighting and like the worst camera ever because I just stopped caring. Because I thought about the people that would want to see my videos are home business owners. They're not going to be people who want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on camera equipment. They want it to be normal. YouTube is where people just want to see homemade videos. And that's what we created. And it was me getting out of my head in order to make that happen. And still, it happens all the time. It happens every time I'm going to hop up to another level. But I would say with video, it's, it's literally jumping in feet first. Don't care about the mess ups and the screw ups that you make because somebody needs to see it. It's really yeah. huge. You know, I'll have people who will call and say, your first video, which, which I think is absolutely terrible, impacted me to want to keep going, stopped me from quitting, you know, helped me do X, Y, Z. And that's the stuff that you never know unless you do it. I'm glad you made that point because so many people, they get stopped because they just don't think that they're having enough impact on people. It's like, well, what do I say? Or, you know, no one's going to listen to me. Right. But like you said, the momentum. It's the continuous of the message, yes. and you you said it right because that's what impacted me. Ray Higdon said the same thing. I think somewhere in there, I caught that same message. You're you're doing a disservice to somebody because somebody right now desperately needs to hear you yeah. and see you. I mean, I've got a brick, I got a cement wall behind me. <laughs> you know, I'm in a basement with two lights. You know, it doesn't stop me from doing a hangout. Right. And that's, that's what I wanted to make sure people really got. And then I guess the second part of that question is not just how, you know, what do you look like? Is your makeup always perfect every single time? Do you do it in your pajamas? Do you, you know. Um, but what 
did you do video on? Yeah, so I've done video on a ton of different stuff. Uh, one of my favorite ways where I got started was just through trainings that I was on. And I, what I used to do, and I, th I think it might come from my teaching background, but it's breaking things down to the super simple. And what I started to realize, because I, I had an extreme awareness of what other people were doing, and I was noticing that other people were doing trainings that were just about three to five minutes long. So for me, I wanted to tell people everything and anything, but that could take me, it was taking me like 15 minutes per video. So I started to think about little simple how-tos, okay, depending upon what I wanted to market. If it's a home business, then I'm going to start to think about, okay, well, what do people want? And how can I deliver that to them? So if, if I learned, if I was on a webinar and I learned a big, huge strategy on, on, you know, on hosting Hangouts, what I would do is I would create little simple videos on how to create my first hangout, what kind of content can I share, what's the best microphone that I can use, and each one was a different video. So I would take this big overarching theme and break them down into little subjects. I would talk about mindset. If I was on a, um, if I listened to a podcast, I would pick one thing from it and, and not regurgitate word for word, but it was stuff that I was learning. I was allowing people to learn with me along the way and just became very open about that too. Like, hey, I'm not going to know everything and there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. However, these are some things that I've learned. And if you know anything else as well, comment. I wanted people to interact with me. How-tos were great. Um, uh, when I started to get really good at a skill set, I started to teach on little teeny tiny tricks that would help people move forward. Because that's what people want. They want the basics. Everybody thinks that they need the big picture, but more often than not, what people are looking for are the nitty gritty teeny tiny basics just to kind of get them moving forward. That's yeah, it. The way to get started. Yeah. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so any Hangout you're on, on this Hangout, there's going to be one thing that you can take from this that you could go record a quick little three-minute video giving somebody a little tip on what you learned, right? I mean, any webinar that you're on, any email that you get that touches you, any book that you're reading, that's what I would do. And I literally would have books in front of my face, and I would be reading off of the book and pointing to this chapter, but it's all part of the process. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and that kind of relates to just going back, to, you know, don't worry about what it looks like. The more real you are, um, because really when you're, particularly when you're trying to train people how to do this or how to do videos or whatever, you want them to feel like they can do it. Yes. And if you do everything perfectly, they're going to feel like I can't be that perfect. Yeah, I would purposely stutter um, and mess up my words in the beginning because I actually learned, I can't remember who I learned it from, but what I learned was that, you know, when you're talking normal, you don't speak verbatim, word for word, like a robot, you're just natural. I always tell people to, to look into the camera and pretend you're talking to your spouse or your best friend and you're having a cup of coffee with them and you're just sharing something about your day. That's it. And let yourself come out. Um, I, in the beginning, was very robotic and felt like I had to act like this marketer. I had to sound like this marketer, and it just didn't work for me. I'm just this bubbly, you know, little teeny tiny petite girl, and that completely changed everything for me. Authenticity was huge when I first started out, and that's when people actually started to connect and subscribe and follow and read my emails and respond was when I became vulnerable and I became authentic. Stop trying to be like somebody else and just exactly. just be who you are. Yep. And don't Definitely. worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. That that definitely works. And you you know, you're a great testament to that because you are. You're perfect on camera. Thank you. So, great. So, so I I have a quick question. This is off the topic a little bit, but I I saw one of your recent videos mm -hmm. that you, where you talked about being an unsupportive spouse. Yes. And, you know, and relating that to having a significant other or whatever it is who's not supportive of, uh, of what you're doing. And I just wanted you to touch on that for a little bit. Sure. Um, do you want me to talk about it from the perspective of what you can do to ha create more support? Or do you want me to share a little bit of our story on, on, on what transitioned me from unsupportive spouse? <laughs> well, that would probably, that would support the first question. So, yeah. So, what you can do about it, and how 
you know, and how your experience related to that. Awesome. Okay. So, little insider secret. Um, I was an extremely unsupportive spouse in the beginning for a couple of different reasons. Um, what I saw Andrew doing, the results that he wasn't getting, and just kind of the lack of conviction that he had, and, and my ability to not understand, right? Mm -hmm. If you're working online, it's a very difficult concept for, for most people to grasp who are used to tangible, right? Who are used to being able to, to see someone's job, to, to, you know, my mother said it to me when I first started out, I know what a nurse is, I know what a teacher is, I know what a doctor is, but I don't know what an internet marketer is. Um, I'm not sure what you do. So there's three things that Andrew did which were extremely smart. Um, and I really do, I, I owe everything to him for doing these three things that really changed things for me. And then in turn, I've also done it myself for unsupportive spouses or, or not spouses, uh, family members or friends that just don't get it, right? So three things. Number one, and I, I spoke about this a little bit earlier, is get them to a live event, okay? If they really mean that much to you, get them to a live event. Spouses, um, in particular, if somebody's living with you or, you know, someone who real who you really, really care about, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, get them to a live event for a few different reasons. Number one, they're going to be surrounded, especially in this profession, with highly positive, driven, motivated people, right? I don't think I've ever been to an event where someone hasn't, uh, where I've ever had an issue, where I've ever met someone and went like, oh, geez, like, <laughs> they're a lot of fun, you know, or anything like that. They're all, we are all extremely supportive and want to see everybody else succeed. So that, number one, supportive people, right, at a live event. Number two, proof that there are others out there. <laughs> so you're not just sitting by the computer and notice it, it. They actually get to meet other people. It's tangible for them at that point, right? And, and that, that was huge for me. So just being able to see and touch and speak to and meet other successful people, other people who are in the same position that you are starting out right now is critical. Then the other two things that he did was his change in conviction. So when we were ready to move and I was, we were starting to talk about me potentially getting involved, his conviction and vision on what we could do with the business shifted. And so if you're out there and you're timid and you're uncertain about your success, then your spouse, then your friends, then whoever it is, then your family members will also feel that way as well too. If you know deep down in your heart that this is what you're meant to do and you are meant to make a difference and you are meant to succeed in this business, your conviction will change the way that they think. And the last thing was implementation. Okay, and this didn't come right away. This was after I joined and started working with him. I joined him. His conviction alone in the live events is what got me going. But implementation and consistent implementation, because when he was working with me, we were working together. We were taking action together. And it took me longer, but I would say for anybody out there, take a good hard look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I truly 100% in in what I'm doing? Number two, am I, am I going to be at the next live event that I need to be at in order to meet other people, in order for this to feel tangible for me? Am I going to bring somebody with me? And number three, am I implementing? Am I implementing anything in order to move forward to get results, even if you're not getting them yet? And that was the transition for me. So that's what took me from unsupportive to starting to run a thriving business. And also, that's what I've done every single time. I actually gave my parents... Um, the live stream because they couldn't come to No Excuses last year when I spoke, but I gave them that live stream just for them to be able to see. Andrew and I take pictures all the time of places we go, but it's also my conviction on how passionate I am about my business and that nobody else is going to tell me what my success is going to look like. And so if you can do those three things, then that's going to be a deal breaker. Yeah, yeah that's huge. That's yep. huge. So thank you. There's. Awesome. More than one golden nugget there for everybody that's you know that's viewing or going or listening to this. So yeah, that was awesome. So yeah. I, I appreciate you going over there. I would say that's definitely a huge piece because I know a lot of people that once they got their spouse to that live event, yeah. they said they're in. Like they finally saw the vision that yeah. I've been working towards. And it was getting them to like, I mean, I met a lot of people that had no excuses, husbands and wives. And it was like one or the other was kinda on the fence and then, then once they attended that live event, they're like, Oh, yeah, 
I totally support you in this. And that and you're right. It's getting them to these live events, seeing the people, because you and I both know this internet world can kind of seem very one person, small little box. I'm on an island in the middle of a big ocean and nobody's there and I got little floaties on and there's no one helping me. So yeah. Huge. We're secluded in a concrete basement, right? <laughs> yeah, secluded in a concrete basement. So going yeah. back to when you started generating leads, yep. what were some of the ways that you started building your tribe? Because usually when you get that first lead, what what did you do after you got the first lead? Like how did you get the second lead? And then how did you start building your tribe? Because I know right now you're really focused on building your tribe behind you. So if you can kind of talk a little bit about that with us. Yeah, sure. So what I started to do is and is when I got my first lead, I jumped up and down, and I actually personally emailed every single lead, uh, <laughs> which some people will do, some people won't, but I did. I would personally email every single one and say, hey, just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Kate. I'm a normal, regular person. If you ever have any questions, here's my phone number. I gave everyone my phone number to the point of where I, I it was starting to get to the point where I had to switch things out because my voicemail box was filling up over and over and over again but so first lead happened and we used YouTube so YouTube was a little different it wasn't paid so it's not like I would get a lead and then I would put more money in and get more leads it was a consistent gradual process of what would happen but I would do the same exact thing when here, here's what I learned is when you have your first lead you have a following no matter what it is and so now it was my job to start creating that tribe so what I would do I emailed every single day during the week I would take weekends off but I would do five days a week no questions asked and what I started doing is I started doing training videos and I started doing blog posts and I was terrible at blogging. Heck, I'm still terrible at blogging. I'm working on that. But what I did is I was starting to build my brand. And what I was doing is I was getting people used to getting my emails every single day. Because that one person doesn't know that they're the only person on your list. And that's what I realized. Because in the beginning, I did. I strayed away a little bit. I probably waited until we had like 20 to 30 leads. And then I realized, wait, all of those people have no clue how many people are on my list. And so if I just start getting consistent and I start creating value, then that's going to be huge. So what I would do is I would either write a blog post, I would shoot a YouTube video, or I would send people over to my Facebook fan page. Because what I started very early on out was creating just little different social media hubs for people to be able to find me wherever they could go. And so what I've been doing lately is really building up my fan base on Facebook. Because what I've learned is that you can build on your personal profile, but it's not scalable, right? So it's something that can get you a, a little, like, get you some results, right? And it can get you some thriving results, but how do you build this huge, massive following? And so the fan page, and especially with the direction that Facebook is going in, is they want business owners to have their own fan base. And so I would even just have an image, right? I would talk about something motivational, and I was terrible at email copywriting in the beginning. All these things were things I just had to learn and grow with, but people have stuck around because I'm consistent. And so I would put an image in my email and tell them to go over to my fan page and comment. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's just basically showing them that you're real, reaching out to them personally, and it got to the point where I couldn't personally reach out to those many email to that many emails every single day. But I will say one lead means you have a following. And now your job is to provide value to that following. And yeah. that is so key. One person is a following. Pay yeah. attention to them. Yeah. Yep. Give them the same courtesy that you would like to have back, no matter what you're promoting or what you're offering. Give value back to them. Become that value leader to that one, because that one is definitely going to become a two, and then a three, and it's just going to go forward from there. So absolutely. That was massive. Um, one of the questions about from our audience as I continue moving this forward is, are we going to see you at No Excuses this year? Yes, you am. Yes, you am. What was that? Yes, you am. Um, <laughs> well, then. Yeah. Hey. Uh, you are. I will be there. Andrew and I will be speaking. Um, I believe I'm coming in on Thursday at some point. So we'll be around. We're ready to hang out. I can't wait to meet everybody. I know there's a ton of new people coming this year. 
which is great. And we're going to be talking about some cool Facebook video ad strategies that we're going to be going through um, with you guys when we speak uh, either on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And we don't know the schedule yet. We just know <laughs> that it's going to happen. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I'm awesome. really looking forward to that. So now is the dreaded question that you've probably been hoping I wouldn't ask, but we really want to have you tell us something about Kate that no one else knows. Now is this from, because now that I've been thinking about it, is this from a business standpoint? Is this just like whatever I want? It's, it's whatever you want, something that nobody nobody knows about you. Okay, so, hmm, let's see. <laughs> All right. When <laughs> it, okay, now I get why there's a 30 second freeze here. Got it. Okay. So you must get some interesting responses, huh? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. And like yeah. I told you, I generally have to come in and bail you out. It gives you a little extra time to think about it. And there's always this 30 seconds of dead silence. Otherwise, you know. All right. I can do this. Um. So when I was younger. This is something that probably most people don't know about me now. I Well, I was a, a very into dancing, um, was a classically trained ballerina, and I actually dedicate a lot of my work ethic now to, to starting dance when I was three and almost going professional when I was 15 and just how hard I worked and how focused I was and the determination. So that I bring a lot of that to my business. However... Um, I was featured at Christmas time when I was in sixth grade on Good Morning America. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Because so I was in the Nutcracker, and they, they reached out to the company that I was um, in, and they were asking for a small town Nutcracker, and they wanted to show it in the big city in New York. And it was a really cool experience for me. Um, to kind of just get out there, be interviewed, and and then I got to see the Nutcracker in, at the with with the New York City Ballet. So awesome. I don't know, if that's some random thing, but it was it was kind of cool. I was I was almost overly shy when I was younger, and so a cool thing for me was dancing is what brought out my you know inner confidence, and I've kind of taken that with me as I've grown up, and it was a really pivotal moment for me because uh, I was absolutely petrified. So oh, there you great. go, something totally random. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. So yeah, you heard it here first, folks. So, um, so how, Kate, how can people get in touch with you if they want to connect with you? Sure. So you guys can go to katemcshay.com. That is my blog. It'll be open in about two days, 48 hours, which is really great. Um, and while you wait, you can also go to facebook.com forward slash Kate McShay dot online leadership pro. And that's my fan page. That's a great place to stay in touch with me um, if you want to, you know, hang and get to know more about different trainings that I offer out. Yeah, you know, kind of watch her strategy on Facebook. Maybe you'll, you'll learn a, a thing or two about what she's going to be teaching possibly at this No Excuses yes. uh, event. Yes. So, awesome. Yep. All right, we're down to our last 30 seconds, Doug. Okay, well, um, I'm looking forward to next week. We actually have a dynamic duo that we're going to be interviewing next week. Um, some guys that started out with network marketing and got into Internet marketing because of that and now have evolved that into their own actual uh, marketing business called Enlightened Marketing. Uh, so Jeremy Howie and Tom Murky, a couple of, uh, you probably know them, a couple of internet marketers and great friends of mine that work out of Colorado here. So they're going to be our guests next week. I can hear the timer going off in the background. So that means our 29 minutes are up. Um, thank you so much to Kate McShay for being our featured guest this week. Uh, what an awesome interview. That was great. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to seeing you next week. I'll let you wrap it up, Katrina. Yeah, thanks, guys, for joining us on the 20 Minute Hangout. Come visit us next week every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch the replay here on our channel, Google Plus channel, Elite Marketing Chefs, and also catch us on iTunes on the 29-minute 20, 20, hangout. Just look us up on iTunes. We'll see you guys there. Kate, hang around for just a sec, and we'll see you guys next week. Great.